where the doctor is looking at the particular patient and understanding how that science may apply in that individual context. There's an art of teaching. There's the pedagogical ways that we know students can learn best. But there's also an art that the teacher should be deploying, that the teacher who has learned you know, from, from, from his or her education what should work with the student in a particular circumstance. We're losing the art of teaching because of regulators in Washington, D.C. micromanaging what has to go on in the classroom. Teaching is the test. I have two siblings who are teachers. My daughter is doing Teach for America right now. Just started. You, you know, it doesn't work micromanaging it from Washington, D.C. You talk to a loan officer at a community bank. We're going to lose half of our community banks in five years because it's over-regulation. But you talk to a loan officer who wants to make a loan. And, and we're losing the art of lending. There's a science in the back. In the, back the, mask, the documents are there. You know if it's a good business or not. But there's a... There's a, 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 an intuition that a loan officer has, whether this is going to be a good loan or not. It, it may be that they're looking at the financial statements and the person missed a quarter. They, they, they were off. They, they lost money one quarter. But, but the banker is thinking, you know what, I, I trends are changing. And by the way, there's another piece of property that I can get a collateral in. And this loan is going to be OK, because if they default on this side, I can go after that piece of collateral. But they're looking over their shoulder at the regulator saying, hey, they missed a quarter. You can't make that loan. We're losing the art of lending. That's what happens when we have big government making these decisions for us. And so that's why I talk about rolling back regulation, because it's suffocating our small businesses. Uh-oh, I better go. OK, OK. First, passional things, health care, economic growth. Education is increasingly important to lifetime success. What role do you see for the federal government in K-12 education and in college affordability? Again, we can't have the government micromanaging things. Yet, you know, and this is where I think uh, um, the whole concept of no child left behind uh, uh, went off the rails. You know, who can argue with the idea of accountability standards? It sounds great. But when you extrapolate that to a national level, you know, what may or may not work here in the Fox Chapel School District may or may not work in Beaver County, may or may not work in Johnstown, may or may not work in Columbus, Ohio, Kansas City, Denver. You know, this idea that the experts in Washington somehow know better than the people here in our state. You know, I, I think we need to empower our states. We need to empower our teachers. I talk about freeing the teachers to teach, to recover the art of education. So I'm concerned when you have the federal government involved in these programs and mic micromanaging things, it's a problem. You know, now the president, you know, he, he came up with this race to the top idea. You know, if we're sending our tax dollars, and, and that's a competitive grant program, we send our tax dollars to Washington. You know, I want to make sure the tax dollars are coming back to Pennsylvania. But with race to the top, they may or may not come back to Pennsylvania if Pennsylvania doesn't lose the competition. So why should the taxpayers in Pennsylvania be paying for the education of, of those in other states. Again, I think we have to rethink you know, how we approach the, the, the federal role in education. With respect to college affordability, tuitions are up 25% in the last four years. We need to you know, find out what's going on with the colleges that are causing them to, to have this, this increase. Is it a function of, of, of the colleges just knowing that the kids are going to get the aid coming from the government? Is there anything that, that we can structure <coughs> and as a program, aid programs we have to incentivize colleges to keep a lid on these tuition increases. 25% in four years is inexcusable. What is your perspective on legislation impacting women? From economic security, including pay equity, to access to birth control and preventative health measures, to harassment and violence against women. Economic security is, is uh, you know, we need jobs. We need jobs. We need a growing economy. You know, it, it, very often it's, 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 it's the woman in the household who's, you, you know, counting pennies. And understanding when you pull up to the gas tank that we're paying twice as much as we were uh, uh, four years ago. Worried about raise, increases in electricity rates. You know, equal pay for equal work. That should be the law of the land. You know, and if there's a, a problem where, where there's an instance where it's not happening, there should be redress. You know, again, I'm looking at my daughter, grown daughter in the education system now. And I trust that she is going to be paid equally for the work that she's doing. Um, 
Access to birth control and preventative health measures through harassment. I mean, to the extent that this is getting at what's in the HHS mandate, you know, I would simply argue that a year ago, you know, women had access to contraception. Uh, very often, private insurance plans were already making that opportunity available uh, to women. Uh, I, I'm afraid, however, we've lost a freedom with, again, one size fits all. You know, my wife, for example, would not like to have, would like to have a, a health insurance plan that, that didn't have that. You know, but we've lost the opportunity now in the marketplace to have that. Um, you, you know, if people want that in their health care plan, fine. Let the market provide that service. Um, and if you don't, well, let the market provide that service. We're losing our freedoms when we allow the government to micromanage everything. And, and you look at, again, the authority that the Secretary of Health and Human Services has under Obamacare to dictate to every single insurance plan in the country what has to be in it. Not just respect to birth control, but with anything. And then, the Secretary has the ability to determine what a, quote, fair premium is. The Secretary of Health and Human Services, who hasn't, may or may not, generally they don't because they come from other, other branches, uh, very little private sector experience. But making these fiat decisions from the federal government, you know, guessing, you know, what a premium should cost uh, when the market may have something else. Um, What do you consider important in apportioning taxes equitably? What is your opinion of the buffer rule? The buffer rule, incidentally, was the uh, rule proposed by Warren Buffett that if you made, if you made more than a million dollars, then you're going to be taxed, uh, I think, 30%, was it? You know, they crunched the numbers on that, uh, um, and that would raise $5 billion a year. $5 billion. That's 11 hours of federal spending. Think about that. We have a $1.2 trillion deficit, and we're talking about raising $5 billion. Um, do I support simplifying or restructuring the tax code? It, it, you know, the, the, uh, the tax code is making us uncompetitive, particularly on the, on the corporate side. You, you know, I do look at, you know, I like the idea of the tax reform, tax simplification, uh, lowering the rates, you know, you know, winnowing out certain uh, credits, favors, where the government is social engineering or playing, you know, picking the winners and the losers. Um, we're always going to have the mortgage deduction. We're always going to have the charitable contribution deduction, child tax credit. But I'd certainly uh, be open to, to tax reform proposals. Uh, do you believe there should be any significant changes to healthcare access? This is where, again, we have to make sure people are getting coverage. We know that the present health care plan will not cover everyone. I do think that we need to look at having a more open marketplace for insurance, the ability to buy insurance across state lines, the idea of tax fairness for individuals who purchase their own insurance. If you don't get it through your, your employer, then why not get the same tax rate if you're buying it on your own? Uh, um, for the, and also talk about the importance of catastrophic plans to save you know, individuals, particularly younger, younger individuals, who may not want a comprehensive plan. The catastrophic plans are much less, less expensive, and if you open up you know, the market so you can buy them across state lines, and you have tax fairness, the prices are going to be lower. And for, for those who are, who are disadvantaged and couldn't even afford that, I think you do look at the tax credit program to allow individuals to go to that marketplace, not to the government, uh, to, get, to get coverage. Um, okay. Just ripping through here. Oh, is that? Okay. Okay. My apologies for going on too long. No, it's not. You're just on time. I'm just 